Uh, now we've got uh, uh, Rod Nakuzi, who's from Transcorp, and he's going to talk about his transformational journey. So uh, as transformation and uh, his entrepreneurial journey. Please, Rod, uh, over to you, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Tarek, for facilitating this session. Thank you, DTEC, for organizing this uh, lovely morning gathering. My name is uh, Rodrigo Nakuzi. I'm the CEO and founder of Transcorp International. Transcorp International, it is a last mile delivery company specialized in temperature controlled deliveries. Why Transcorp? Why last mile? Why temperature controlled? Well, as soon as I landed in the UAE 11 back, uh, I always had a dream to start my own company. I had few ideas, but it was never about the idea. It, it's, it was always about the product itself and if the market needed the product. So we started Transcorp. Why last mile? It was never a last mile delivery company. It was a B2B company. It was, not, it was never a B2C. But we saw a big gap in the market, and we decided to jump on it. And we were not scared to change the concept of the company. Why temperature control? Well, in big cities or in big business hubs like the UAE, if you're not a niche, and if you are a self-funded company, it would be hard for you to play with the big players. So we decided to take a niche, which is the temperature control. No one back then was, let's say, entertaining it. So we were the only players, and it was successful. The big questions that all the entrepreneurs will be reading or will be listening to from the news is why 90% of the companies will be shutting down within the first year. I will be looking at it from a different perspective. Why 1% or let's say 10%, one out of 10 entrepreneurs are succeeding? What are the key factors for their success? And what are the key success for their sustainability? Anyone from the crowd would like to share his experience why the entrepreneurs are failing? Well, I've had the occasion and the experience of failing several startups. So um, one of those is sometimes people are stuck and don't really want to talk about their ID. They stay alone, they think they have something very secret and then don't share it, uh, which they should do. Financially, um, incubators, accelerators are helping startups to grow and to like, get visibility and knowledge on how to raise money, how to grow. And sometimes people are just maybe inexperienced and don't have uh, yeah, the right knowledge to... I totally with agree with you. The shared economy is the future. And this is what DTEC is trying to do. So there are three main factors. One of them is the market. The second one is the setup itself. And the third one, the way I see it, is the entrepreneur himself. Let's start with the market factors. Does the market need the product? Regardless if the product is successful or not, does it, the market does have any requirement for your product? If it doesn't, then you should not operate it. You should look for a different market. Is the market size enough to, un to entertain your growth? Is it the right timing to operate? I'm talking about the personal timing and I'm talking about the business timing. In terms of personal, you, do you don't need to have a big events going on in parallel with your launching because you will be fully drowned in your uh, setup. So make sure all your big events are completed or delayed a bit and make sure you focus on your setup. In terms of market, well, you don't need to launch during Expo 2020, for example, because all the attention will be directed towards those big, big events. You, will not, you don't need to launch during a market recession because people will not be looking at any changes. The competition. Uh, as soon as we started, we were the only player doing temperature control deliveries. We were very happy, and it was a very, let's say, stress-free journey. Two years down the line, competitors started to pop up, and big competitors. And it was very aggressive. We were very stressed about it. We were very, let's say, mad about it. But the more 
we understood this competition, the better we have executed our business. So what happened is we embraced this competition, we understood it, we tried to, to know where they are failing, and we, we, we achieved, let's say, our objective. We tried to be different. We were always a market disruptors. They were trying to, let's say, to follow what we did, but we were at least one step ahead of them. The setup itself, the product, the market needed a company like Transcope. There was no one there. But let's say you're starting a GPS tracking company, and your maps doesn't work, and your technology is not working. So why are you starting it? You need to make sure the product is successful. You need to do a proof of concept, a successful proof of concept, to make sure that you're, you're launching a right product in the right market. As the gentleman said, and this is a very crucial element, the cash flow. And I'm sure most of you will agree with me on this element because no matter how successful you are, no matter what kind of product you have, without cash flow, I'm talking about self-funded companies, guys, of course. I'm not talking about the well-funded companies. I'm talking about companies who've, who are running on a bootstrapping mode. Whatever they are generating, they are re-injecting it in the companies. So cash flow can be a decisive element in your growth and in your continuity. You can be successful, but without cash flow, you cannot continue. Banks, for the first couple of years, they will be very hesitant to support you, which I totally understand. And it was proven that they have the right to do it. So you need to make sure you, have, you are encountered by the right, let's say, angel friends or the right angel investors or to run on a very bootstrapping mode. Your team. I was lucky to have a good team. I always believed in young talents for many reasons. Financial reasons, for, it's a startup. You cannot afford big salaries. Their passion, their dedication, and their courage to join such startups because their responsibilities is much less than, let's say, an established uh, employee. So it is true I have created Transcorp, but the team around me are the one who made it because after a few months, I was out of the operation. I was focusing on the growth of the company, and this is what every entrepreneur should be doing. The first couple of months, you need to have your hands on in the business, but after that, you need to fully focus on how to grow the business. So make sure you focus on the business, not in the business itself. To sustain your business, you need to be profitable. Without profitability, you cannot scale up your business. Make sure you are very transparent with your customers. Tell them, yes, we are making profit and we are proud of it because with our profits, you will be able to grow your companies. We will be able to be more flexible, giving you more solutions, giving you more options. So with, I'm, again, I'm going to repeat, guys, it is for self-funded companies, this strategy, because some companies, they don't care. They care about the volumes. They care about the valuation. But for self-funded startup companies, you need to be profitable. The technology. Once we started, we didn't have any technology. And we know it is a digital era. Without technology, you will be outcompeted. You will be out of the market very soon. So what we tried to develop is a one-kind and one-of-a-kind technology that will eliminate or that will change the current processes in the market. Imagine, guys, courier companies, they have a... Mm -hmm. They have a pouch to deliver for you. They'll be calling you from a call center based somewhere abroad. They will be asking you about your address. You will tell them, for example, I'm based in Media City. Media City, is it Dubai or Abu Dhabi, they will ask you. Seriously, guys, you don't need those kind of calls. We are in digital world. People should be able to pin locations. People should be able to choose their delivery windows. So what we developed is a technology that changed the whole and disrupt the whole courier industries. No more phone calls, no more waiting time at homes, since we, we are still the only company giving four delivery windows per day. So within three hours, your package will be delivered. You will not be waiting the whole morning or the whole evening, and somebody, they will show, show up or they don't show up. All of that is done through technology. We're pushing information to the customers. It's not the customer who's coming back to us. We're pushing 
track and trace uh, information. The customer will be able to see his package. And if he's not at home, he can reschedule with a single click. Nobody will be calling them. Nobody will be bothering them. Even if you are in a meeting, you can simply reply by yes or no or reschedule. So the technology was a very crucial element for us. And this is one of the factors that took Transcorp to the next level. But make sure you have a proof of concept, a successful one, because you don't need any technology. You need your right technology. The entrepreneur himself, he's the captain of the ship. He's the leader. He's whom everyone is looking up to him. You should be always optimistic. You should be always supportive, but you should be always realistic. Whatever you draft on papers is different in reality. The numbers that you project, they're lovely, but you need to achieve them. If you don't achieve them, it's not the end of the world. You need to stay always focused on the business. You need to be realistic in what you're doing, and people will follow. Having the right business attitude. I think it's a golden rule for any entrepreneur to be enthusiastic, down to earth. He should put his ego aside. He should be, uh, how to say it, eagle-eyed, and people will come to you and your product will get the right attention. At initial stages, you need your hands on in the business. And this is what I did. I was fully involved in every aspect of the business. But I knew if I don't have the right people to run the business, I will never be able to grow Transcorp. This is why you need to have the right team and you need to have the right compatibility within the team. You need to raise a culture of loyalty in the company. And how you do that, you share your profits, you share your losses, you share your good moments and your bad moments with those people. It is your second family. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. Throughout your journeys, you're going to be having ups and downs. A lot of downs more than ups. So too much downs, then the ups will come. Since you are the leader, people will be looking at you. So if you are down, negative, you will be able to pass this to your employees and the employees will be able to pass it on to your customers. And this is a very negative aspect to your business. You need to embrace stress. You need to make stress as a friend and know how to overcome it. And you need to be driven by success and not only by, by money. Money is important, but success is a motivational factor for everyone in the company. You will be making money sooner or later, but you need to look for how to achieve the company's success and meet your company objectives. The journey, I see it in four phases. Um, let me describe it. It's the World Cup era. So let's take an example of a young football team full of amateurs playing in a rookie league. This is your first phase. You're very passionate, you're very energetic, you just want to rule the world. You will spend three years there, you jump from the second division, which is the rookie league, to the premier league. Let's take the English premier league, for example. So you, the startup phase is done, now you are in the major league, you're playing with the giants. To be able to do it, you need more talents on board, you need more ex expertise on board. You need more technology on board. Without funds, you're not going to be able to do it. So this is what we did. We raised funds recently to grow the business and take it to different cities. We are able to grow it organically, but it will take us a lot of time. So if you are to raise funds, it should be, be this is my advice, based on a story or based on decent numbers. You don't raise funds the first zero to two years, unless your numbers are justified. Make sure you have a high EBITDA or a high gross or net profit because investors, whatever ideas you're gonna give them, they're gonna be looking at your numbers. So if you don't want the numbers to be the decisive factor in your fundraising, make sure you bring investors on board before you start, based on a concept, based on an idea. So you played in the major league, you won the league, now you went to the Champions League. You want to go regional, from Dubai to the Gulf. You need more talents, more technology, more energy in the company, and more funds. Some companies decide to stay in 
like locally, they don't want to go regionally, which is not wrong. Maybe they've seen that there is no room for their product in different countries. But for us, we still believe that there are a lot of rooms locally and regionally. And our plan is to go internationally, not only regionally. Because we're going to be always focused on what we do. We're not going to be any courier company. We're just going to be touching the F&B sector, the cosmetics and pharmaceuticals, and anything that needs temperature control deliveries. To wrap it up with a few advices, never be a follower. Never copy-paste a, a setup or a competitor. Make sure you are a market disruptor because this is how you're going to get all the attention in the market. This is how investors will come to you. They're going to know you're changing things. You're not just like any other entrepreneur in the market. I said it before. Work on the business, not in the business. But this should happen after a few, let's say, few months. At initial stages, make sure your hands are on. Don't enter into price wars because you are not equipped at initial stages to fight those sharks. Make sure you are always customer service driven. Customers will appreciate it and they will stick around. We had an incident. We had competitions coming to our customers, giving them 50% less than Transcope. Ask me how many customers we lost out of 150. One. This is the customer loyalty that we have, one. And that customer tried, ironically, to come back at us after one week. Unfortunately, we have filled up the spot by someone else by then. Run a revenue generated and always be a low profile, let's say, setup. Don't get the attention of the big players because if they feel that you are grabbing a market share from them, they will just make sure to fight you. They will make sure to close your business or they will make sure to acquire you. It's not a bad thing, but if you have a vision for the company, Getting acquired at early st stages is, I see it is, is, is like the end of your uh, success. Be flexible and ready for adjustments. This is what we did. We were a B2B business model. We have completely shifted our model to become a B2C business model. We were not afraid of it. We were very hesitant, but very assured about the results we're gonna get from such shift. Your business plan, is great, but I'll be honest with you guys, and frankly speaking, you will, you will change your business plan 10 times throughout the journey. Be an entrepreneur and not a businessman. Don't look at your business from a perspective one plus one equal two. Make sure with one plus one you make it 10. How? Find a way to do it. There is always a way. If there is a will, there is always a way. Avoid transactional business. The cost of acquiring a new business should be calculated. If your cost of acquiring a new business is low, fine, go for transactional business. But if, if it's costing you a lot of money and a lot of time, avoid it. Avoid it. My new project. Since I believe in startup, and we're still a startup, no matter what our size is, we have the startup mentality. My aim is to promote the new entrepreneurs and bring them to a different league. We are here as a company because of entrepreneurs like you. We believed in their concept, we helped them to grow, and they help us in return to grow. So this eco-friendly and supportive environment that we have is what made Transcorp successful. So the new project will be also based on such things. It is called Gourmet Hub. Gourmet Hub will be a hub for young millennials, food entrepreneurs. Now if you want to open a food concept, you look at your operating cost, trade licensing, hiring, visa costs, you will see, like, I don't have money. Why I'm, how am I going to do it? This is an option for you how to do it. So it is divided into two main sectors, one for startups and one for medium companies. For startup, is to, uh, to avoid the aggregate operating cost so you can operate on a monthly minimum royalty fees. And for medium-sized companies, to promote or to sell their products regionally while they're still here. How is that? Because we'll be opening 10 different hubs in 10 different cities. 
Imagine you are a food entrepreneur in Dubai. You have a very successful model. Overnight, your products are in 10 different cities. How is that? Because we have a, a team of, let's say, experts. We're going to get the recipes. We're going to get the know-how, the packaging, the supplying of all your products. And we're going to do the same setup in every city. So overnight, you are selling your products in those cities, and you're increasing your numbers. How are we going to do it? It's not only the hub, because it's going to be an online incubator as well. We will be pushing and promoting your business. We will never hold an inventory ourselves. We're just going to act as an aggregator. So we're going to be having shared kitchens. This is for startups. We're going to be having private studios. This is for medium-sized companies. We will be having retail zones to sell your products on the spot within the hub. So we're going to be having working work customers, co-working spaces, and event section. I'm sorry, DTEC, but it's, we're not competing. It's completely different. And an online incubator. And this is the most important aspect. If, like, I'm sure you're going to be having your own e-commerce. But imagine we're going to be having our own e-commerce as well to push your products. So we're going to be have a very focused marketing towards the foodies in town. And of course, who's going to be doing the deliveries? It's Transcorp. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, I will be happy to take any of your questions if you have any. Thank you.